Welcome to the first game of Apox Twilight. Uh, so to recap, a brand new full virtual reality system called the Virtual Gear uh, was created a couple of years ago as a Kickstarter, and it was hugely successful, and it is just now being released to the general public. A uh, company has created a virtual MMO called, uh, called Apox Twilight. And as part of a, uh, they're, they're in early development of the game, and but as part of a uh, promotion to try to get the word out for the game, uh, they ran a contest, and your game master, of, who runs games for you online, Bull, aka me, got a, who won a contest for it. And the prize for the contest was access to the alpha testing for the brand new a virtual MMO, and a set of virtual gear for uh, him and his group. So he has sent you guys all each a virtual gear headset, and you guys have all prepared for the first night of the alpha testing for Apox Twilight. Uh, there is very little information known about the game going into it. The company has been keeping it kind of under wraps because it's such an early stage game. Uh, the only thing you really know is that it's been described as post-apocalyptic magic punk is the, the buzzwords that they're using to describe the genre of game. Uh, the virtual gear itself is a basically a full helmet with a visor. Um, the helmet has a number of uh, electrode sensors that connect to your um, synapses and can basically gives you an override so that you do a um, a fully immersive virtual reality experience. Once it's turned on, you don't have any outside uh, perceptual awareness. Um, your body doesn't move around with you while you're in the VR. It's it's fully mental. Um, and in fact, the uh, the headset actually came with two sample uh, virtual reality programs to kind of give you an idea of to kind of get you used to it. Uh, they're fairly neat. Uh, one of them is the Virtual Smithsonian, which allows you to explore a virtual representation of the in the entire Smithsonian uh, Museum, which is really awesome. And the other one is Virtual Sports that comes with a really basic bowling, a darts, and a tennis game that you can play against an AI. Um, it kind of gives you an idea of how to move around in the game and stuff, and it's it's all... And again, it's all completely mental. You just, you know, you think about what you do. But while you're inside, it feels like you're actually doing that. Like, you know, it feels like you're moving your arm. It feels like you're looking around. It, it's pretty interesting, but it takes you a little while to to adjust to this. You guys get the headset a couple of days in advance. So you guys get a little bit of a chance to, to acclimate yourself and to uh, set up the, the headset the first time because you have to uh, register it and... Uh, get it so that it's reading your, your neural pathways properly. Uh, and then it is time to log in. Uh, the, the game is set to start at 8 o'clock in the evening. So right at 8 o'clock you guys all hit start and with a whoosh that looks like Starfield coming at you, uh, you are transported into the virtual game. Uh, the first thing that happens is you're dropped into a white space, uh, and looking down at yourself, you are basically a blank, uh, a blank white form figure, uh, and a little dialogue pops up saying, "Please create your character," uh, and you get various options on these little uh, emerald green windows that'll pop up, kind of little, you know, virtual windows that pop up in front of your your face and after a little bit of testing you realize that you can manipulate the sliders press buttons on the little screens um, and you can start creating your characters uh, character creations relatively freeform uh, at this stage of the game it's a little bit limited because it's an alpha test uh, you can only play human and there's some limitations to size and height uh, the size sliders and stuff to keep you 
relatively human sized. There's a little warning as you're adjusting the sliders that says um, that it's recommended you make a character similar in height uh, to your own physical body because in the virtual rea virtual world it is a little hard to adjust um, to the differences because if you're playing a character that's shorter or taller it's awkward and it'll take longer to acclimate uh, so you guys play with the sliders and once you're all happy with them uh, you put in your character names and we have Valkar, Sashka and Veslager 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 and it, looks hey, like, and it looks like we have a Sam coming in, so that's excellent. The next step is you guys all end up in a field, and there is what looks to be a military drill sergeant standing in front of you. He's, he's a redhead with flat, with a flat top, and he's got your, your he has your stereotypical uh, drill sergeant's attitude. He's yelling at you guys a lot, but he's basically your tutorial. He walks you through um, the rest of character creation, choosing a uh, class. Um, and he explains that classes are not a set thing in the game. It just gives you your starting array of stats and skills. Explain. Just like uh, Conan Exiles? I have not played, played Conan Exiles, uh, but there is no Dong Slider. No. <laughs> All right. So he walks you through the rest of character creation, choosing your uh, class, your skills, your at attributes and talents, all of that. Uh... Then he starts walking you guys through you uh, through actually commanding your character. Uh, basic movement's pretty easy, um, as you think it and your character does it. It's basically just like real life. You know, you're like, I want to move my arm, and you can move your arm. Uh, it it does take a, a when you first started using the uh, when you were testing the virtual gear out with the uh, virtual sports and virtual Smithsonian. It took you a, a few minutes to get used to the because there is a little bit of a dissonance between moving, moving your physical arm and moving a virtual arm. Um, it's not 100% the same, so but it's really, really close. So you're able to get over that dissonance pretty quick. Um, did anybody make a character that is different from their own size by more than an inch or so as far yes. as heights and stuff? You are taller? Taller. Okay. Jeff, you're going to have a little bit of an issue for a little while because being taller means that everything's off. Okay. Your 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 line of sight is different than what you're used to. Your stride's a little bigger than you're used to. Your reach is a little further than you're used to. Yeah, like I said, everything's just a little off, so that's it's going to take you a little bit of time. Um, okay. We're going to do a quick uh, tutorial quest. For this quest, you're at a minus one agility. Okay. Uh, as it takes you, like I said, it'll take you a little bit of time of using your character to get used to the height and size difference. Because like I said, it is just a little bit weird. You're used to, when you take a step, you're used to going so far. And now you're going a few inches further. You know, so it's just, it's a little weird. It would have been actually harder for you when you were when you had your uh, pseudo-dwarf character. Because being yeah. shorter is even more difficult, I think, than, than what you're used to. You know, you go to reach for a cup and you miss it by two inches. <laughs> <laughs> um, from there they, they walk you through the menu um, to use your menu you have to do a specific command um, and this prevents you from opening your status windows and stuff up by accident basically you put your hand up um, kind of in your uh, top left hand side of your vision and you kind of swipe left and then uh, swipe right and then down kind of making a uh, a 90 degree angle and uh, you test it a few times, and you get used to opening up the menu. Um, your initial menu opens up a, uh, an inventory, but you can kind of slide it open and open up more windows. Uh, there is a total of four windows or five windows you can technically open. There's uh, your paper doll, which gives you a little representation of your character with all of your um, equipment slots. Uh, there's an inventory window which uh, shows any inventory your character would have, uh, anything you're carrying with you. There is a status window, um, and this shows you uh, your attributes, any skills, etc. shows you all of that stuff. There's also um, 
This is also where you would manipulate your experience points to spend them to raise stats and buy new skills and stuff. Uh, there is a friends list, which is currently empty for everybody. Um, and there is a uh, options menu, which currently doesn't seem to have to, too many options on it. <laughs> uh, there's a logout button, and that really seems to be about it. Uh, you could adjust volumes and stuff a little bit as well. Um, after that, he walks you through uh, using some of your basic abilities. Um, your character can more or less... Uh, your character, your avatar knows your skills. Um, so like Jeff, you have, uh, you have a couple of spellcasting abilities. Yes. Uh, elemental bolt, fire? Firebolt and barrier. Okay. Uh, using your abilities, uh, there's a couple of, there's a handful of little training dummies for you to kind of practice on. Uh, so for example, for those of you that want to make melee attacks, you focus on your target and you basically just think about the attack you want to do. So, like, well, you just want to make an attack, you basically just kind of start swinging, and then your uh, avatar sort of takes over. You have control over it, but it's like it's like instinctual. You know how to swing. Like, even if you've never really swung a sword before. Your character knows. Uh, spells need to be spoken aloud. So you need to say okay. the name of the spell when you cast it. Uh, <laughs> you get this really cool little uh, effect when you go to cast a spell. So you go to cast uh, your elemental bolt, and um, you ever seen any anime where they do and you get like the big weird like circular diagram looking thing in the air where they're casting spells? Yes. This big flash. Yeah, you get kind of that. Okay. So, uh, and because you're casting a fire spell, it is a red. You get this fiery red glowing glyph thing that comes up when you go to cast. I like it. And you call out the name of the spell and poosh. It's really interesting feeling, because you get this little little whoosh of, of warm air, like warm feeling that kind of rushes through your arms, and then ball of flame shoots out and hits the target. It's pretty like cool. It. Uh, and all of the skills are like that. It's basically one of those things where you focus on them, and you basically just go to use them, and your character naturally seems to know what he's doing. And with that, the, uh, the drill sergeant uh, congratulates you. His job well done. You have now graduated to adventurers. And uh, he tells you, now the next step is going to be learning how to put your skills into practice. You say, follow this path, and you will find a small farmhouse. Talk to Farmer Merrick, and I believe he will have a job for you. So, you guys, that means. I'm assuming you're uh, going to head up the path? No, I'm going to charge right out into the darkest forest. All right, the Gru eats, <laughs> the Gru eats you, you're dead. Oh, oh poor Sam. We'll it miss you. Worth it. <laughs> worth it. Respawn. <laughs> you have to make a new character. No. All right, I'm assuming you're going up the path. Yes. Heading up the path. Uh, <clears throat> it winds through uh, a few trees, and gonna, then... What's that? Uh, uh, I'm going to attempt to bunny jump the way there. Okay, you start bunny jumping. Oh, one of those. <laughs> uh, it's to go just a little bit faster. Usually when you jump, there's a slight speed boost in a lot Skipping. of games. The next thing you know, he's going to take off all his armor, stand on a mailbox, and start dancing. Uh, yeah. Goddamn. All the time. Goddamn naked night elves <laughs> dancing on the mailbox. Uh, all right, uh, if I swipe up there, is there a, a emote list I can bring up? Any macros? Uh, no. You don't see any emotes. Aw. Lame. They haven't. They haven't gotten those into the game yet. It is still alpha. It is still alpha. Emotes are oh. kind of. Emotes are down on the list a little ways. Okay, you come around to Ben and you see ahead of you a farmhouse, and there is a small field of looks like vegetables of some kind growing behind it, and standing in front of the farmhouse is a older gentleman uh, wearing rough clothes and a big floppy hat and carrying a. a uh, over his head. What's that? Does he have anything over his head? No. Doesn't look like they have quest icons. <laughs> you actually have to talk to people and find quests. Oh. I know. He, uh, as you guys start approaching, he's like, Oh, greetings, travelers. How are you on this fine day? 
Uh, he seems fairly well, fairly lifelike. Oh, as a note, um, I don't know if I actually covered this last time. The graphics for the game are not 100% realistic. Um, they're really good CGI-ish type graphics. Um, very slightly stylized. Uh, and, like, the rendering in detail tends to be something along the lines of uh, some of the some of the Blizzard cinematics. You know how they kind of have that really kind of hyper-detailed, but they're still a little bit stylized mm-hmm. to, to the graphics for them? That's kind of how all your character avatars look and how the world looks. So there's a lot of detail, but it's not, like, 100% realistic. Okay. Um, so... Uh, yeah, he's he's a, he look, he's like I said he's an older gentleman. You can see he's got a he's got a white beard, um, wearing rough rough clothing, uh, and he's carrying uh, he's got a he's holding a hoe in one hand because he's a farmer. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk up into him. Into his him. Collision on. His yeah. collision on. Uh, yes, actually, he kind of dodges. He's like, uh, excuse me, can I help you? Oh, nice. Very realistic. Yeah. Apparently, they do have some sort of AI to them. You know, realistically, realistically, if I were to be honest in how I would jump into this game initially, what equipment do I have on me? Uh, you have your starting have... Equi- you have your starting equipment. Okay, so I have some really basic things mm-hmm. like uh, a water skin, some food, a torch, that sort of thing. Well, did you buy that stuff? Uh, I don't think we ever went through equipment, ah. except for armor that came with. Skills. Oh, sorry, I I did have uploaded a uh, a, a couple editions of versions of the rules. Um, oh, okay. The long and short of it, just to finish off the uh, thought I was having. Yes. Is I gonna pull out a torch? Okay. Uh, I want to light it. Okay. I'm gonna chuck it on the thatch roof. All right. Bull, don't lie to me and say you wouldn't have tried this, too. <laughs> this, this is this is the tutorial. <laughs> it is. You always got to screw around and push the rules in the tutorial. That's how you figure out a game. Okay. Uh, so, Sam, all right, you pull out a torch. Uh, when you pull out a torch, um, a little option comes up to uh, light the torch or not. I so, click the button. Yeah. You click the button, the torch flames up. Cool. Uh, the rest of you see Sam pull out a torch, and he looks at it for a minute, looks up at the thatch hut, the the, the roof of the house, uh, and chucks it. My reaction is... <laughs> what is it, D10 plus agility? Uh, jaw, your... jaw hits the floor and kind of bounces a few bits, right? Uh, yeah, D10... Uh... 2d12 plus agility, because there's not really a throwing That's skill great. at the moment. All right. Oh, that is poor. <laughs> it is, but it's a you're trying to throw it up onto a roof. That's not <laughs> hard to do. Up. Easy, easy to hit. Uh, it goes up on the roof. Uh, the farmer looks aghast at you. He's just like, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, a moment later, the, the torch winks out. Uh, oh. The roof did not catch on fire. It's like, what do you think well, you're doing trying to burn my house down? It can't burn. You're fine. Don't worry about it. What it that's... Don't worry about it. <sighs> you were saying? <laughs> Is there something my friend can do to make it up to you? No. He says, yes, I have a great dilemma. He says, all of my stores are in, the, are in my cellar. But unfortunately, a swarm of rats has moved in, and any time I try to go down there to get any of my food or anything, they attack. So they're currently trapped down there. Oh, I just it, googled it, though. Technically, a group of rats is referred to as a mischief. I'm not kidding. Interesting. Okay. A it's mis- a mischief of rats. Interesting. All right. Uh, he says, please, I would, if you could exterminate the rats for me, uh, I would be greatly appreciative. Should we bring I, I, back their spleens? I correct him. It's a mischief of rats. <laughs> he says, please, destroy the rats for me, and I will reward you. Uh, uh, no, you do not. Yes or no on the spleens? Uh, no, you do not need to bring spleens. They just, you just need to kill them. Okay. As long as they're dead, that's all I care about. 
Uh, one of the things that the um, your drill sergeant suggested was that you form a party. Uh, that is something that you can do. Uh, I, was, I guess. And form a party and invite them. Okay, that's one of your commands that you have on your status window. So, you invite each of the players. Uh, do they accept? Mm, I do. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Good, because this mean, this way you don't have to each kill 12 rats. <laughs> Sounds like more experience for me. Not really. Okay. <laughs> um... All right. Uh, let's see. All right. So then, uh, so you're at a party. So a quest pops up for the for the party, uh, and it is the uh, in, it says intro quest: a rat problem. Quest giver: Farmer Merrick. Uh, and it says gold: defeat twelve Ravensport rats. Reward: two hundred XP, twenty gold, small gold pouch, or sorry, small pouch. Okay. Is is the rewards. Uh, you can mouse over the, or like you can kind of, not mouse, but if you like looking at the little window that pops up, if you kind of hover your hand over top of the the small pouch, uh, it pops up um, status information for the pouch, and it listed as a common quality item uh, with a ten gold piece value. Uh, it's a, goes in the bag slot, and it increases bag space by six slots. Neat. So. It's Wait. a rat bag. <laughs> Let's go fill fill our bags with rats. Oh, it should have been a rat hide bag. That would have been awesome and disgusting. Uh, well, you know what I it should... would be then, Bull? It would be our mischief bag. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. And uh, one, two, three, groan. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I can't like that, actually. That wasn't grown worthy. That was that was. All right, those are rare for me. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I'll give you a I'll give you a <laughs> golf clap. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um. The uh, farmer Merrick points over. There's a uh, a roots one of those uh, root cellar doors along the side of the farm house. He says that it was down there, and I'm assuming you guys are heading that direction. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, Anybody else wearing armor besides Tetsuki? Oh yeah. Uh, I have light armor. That's yeah. actually probably a good idea to discuss what you guys can and can do and stuff real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, skills and whatnot. And a good idea to refresh me of what you guys all have. So Tony. I am a ranger. I am pretty good with a bow, and yeah. not so good with uh, one-handed weapons. Um, I'm wearing the light armor. And um, I, I have negotiation is my other good skill, and I took woodworking and wood gathering or whatever the appropriate skill is. I've forgotten the name. Wood but cutting. Wood cutting. Okay. So I'm, yeah. So that's kind of what what I have there. Okay. Just as a quick note, uh, here is basically what the various. Uh armors look like. Yeah, that kind of gives you an idea of what, uh, like, the cloth armor, the chain armor, the plate armor, the leather armor look like. So. I am wearing a midriff chain shirt. I am beautiful. <laughs> At the moment, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fabulous and armored. Okay. Sam, you're doing, you're playing the, the warrior with a big sword, right? Uh, no, I'm playing the warrior with two small swords. Okay. He's got okay. two weapon fighting. Ah. Because apparently that was the only way I could do two weapon fighting, if I remember correctly. Mm. I couldn't do heavy one handed. I had to do light one handed. No, I think you could do light. You could have done heavy. Was it? Oh no, because I was gonna focus on dex based. Ah. Okay. Uh, which which all the damage bonuses come from dex for light. Right. So I'm gonna shank. I'm gonna you're, shank a mother -licker. You're gonna be a finesse character. Yes. Okay. Because they're fun. Uh, Jules? Mm hmm. What were you playing? Uh, kind of like a rogue alchemist. Okay. Um, that's right. You rogue took... slash alchemist. You Sorry. Took... Let me. <laughs> like a rogue alchemist. Like, ah, I'll mix these things all over the place. 
you no, took, not that dead. You took some of the um, crafting skills, or the uh, the, st- the stealth skills and stuff, didn't you? I went specifically dodge, uh, one-handed weapons, fighting, and perception and stealth with uh, with some alchemy thrown in there because I don't have a lot of strength. Right. It doesn't matter how strong I am if you're on fire. Okay. I'm wearing the linen clothing, and I have a copper dagger. Most of my stuff is focused on uh, making things catch on fire with magic. And I'm very perceptive. Why is the rogue in the back? For where rogues belong. It's to better stab you in the back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There wasn't a way to actually be, like, sneaky behind-ish. Gotta have her check for traps. These rats might have booby-trapped the place. I seriously Probably. doubt it, but I think the the worst part, the bigger issue yeah, would be rats chewing through the, like, the railings. You, you know, know if, 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 it's, if it's stone stairs, we're okay, but if there's wooden planking anywhere, dollar shit don't is the chew I was calm. I was commenting about how fabulous I am because I'm just shiny and covered in copper head to toe. Yeah. The fortune in today's market. Ah, uh, starting gear's not worth anything. Well. Okay, uh, everybody should have their initiative calculated, yes? Yes. In some form or another? Yep. Alright. So... I've been, actually, I've been trying to read up on where I get it. Uh, initiative is... Okay, yeah, because that was something I added after the, mm-hmm. the last time you looked. Um, initiative Focus is... Focus times three. Okay. Agility times two. And any modifiers. Add them together. Also, your defense mm-hmm. is... So, yeah, it's focus times two and agility times three. It's on the new character sheet, too. Yes. Wait, focus times two and agility and times three? Hang on. Yeah. Correct. Hang on. It's kind of the inverse of initiative. I was trying to find ways to make agility not be an overweighted stat. <laughs> that's, always, that's always tricky because so much stuff in a, in a role-playing game relies on characters' reflexes. Speed. Yep. All right, so I'm rocking out on the 26. Which may have influenced my uh, build. <laughs> All right, uh, so you got a 26. Uh, initiative's 26. Mm-hmm. Jeff, what's yours? 32. Sam? Uh, 15. 15. And Tony? 21. Okay. So, 30-something. 32. All right. Is up first. Uh, you, I will you... hold my action until the uh, fighter type moves downstairs. Okay. I was going to yeah, note that you can hold your action. Uh, on your turn, you can take a move action a free action, and an action action. (laughs) A full action. Uh, Movement is... uh, You can move three... uh, You can move three squares. If you have a five agility or better, you can move four squares. And I don't think anybody has a ten agility, do you? Nope. Nope. Give me time. Alright, so if you have a five or better, you can move four squares, otherwise it's three squares. For the moment. Mm Mm-hmm. I would have a five bull, but apparently I'm too tall. Hey, sorry. Yeah, you're you're still you're still <laughs> yeah you're still adjusting to your your size difference. Sorry. Yes, I, I I modified my stuff accordingly. Yeah, in fact, you realized that the second you started going down the stairs, and your first stride was slightly too large, long, and you almost fell down the stairs. Okay. So you're like, oh, I've got to. So you got to slow down just a little bit and kind of think about your. <laughs> it's kind of like me walking with my bad knees. I kind of have to. Old. Yeah, I kind of have to. I, I, I kind of have to think about each step a little bit for just a second to make sure that I don't, you know, kill myself. Okay. Okay. Uh, Thirty something is first, but you're holding your action. Uh, we had a twenty-six, I believe, Jules. Mm-hmm. Uh, you are up next. Um. All right, going down up there, kind of looking around the corner. Okay. Did you want to? Seeing, did you want to stealth? 
Yes. Go ahead and make a stealth roll. Uh, it'll be 2d12 plus your, uh, I believe, sneak skill. Yeah, plus my stealth plus the tight stat. Yeah, plus agility. Nice. Woohoo! Alrighty. Sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, different all right. commands for different programs. Uh, Jules, Jules kind of starts creeping down the stairs, and as she does, she vanishes from sight. Okay. Uh, you guys can still kind of see her, uh, because you're in the same party with her. Uh, but she looks kind of clear and see-through. All right, so, then. So she's obviously sneaking. <clears throat> all right, you peer around the corner. Uh, this is what you can see. There are some, uh, there are some light there. There's some, some little wall sconces that are glowing. Um, all right. Uh, and I, I kind of relay that to everyone else up there. It's like, yeah, this is what I'm seeing. This is what they are. And they're really creepy looking. Rats, when you hit the Uncanny Valley with rats, it's even more... Eh. Yeah, these are these are good-sized rats, too. They're like good, probably <clears throat> two and a half feet long. Big fat ugly suckers, and they're all kind of. You can hear some squeaking now that uh, the thing. Now that you're kind of looking around the corner, there's some some faint squeaking coming from down here. Squeak, squeak, squeak. squeak. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, I believe Tony was on twenty-one. I am gonna hold until after our big fabulous-looking fighter gets down there. All right. Get yeah, All right. Our fabulous-looking fighter is on fifteen. And our fabulous looking fighter may go. Really quick, on initiative, was I supposed to roll something? No. Initiative okay. is fi- initiative is fixed. Okay, okay. Um, well, how'd you get such crazy initiatives? High focus and high uh, agility. Ah, uh, yeah, I need to pump up my focus. Anyway, uh, so what was it? Four steps? What's your agility? Uh, six. Yes, four steps. Fun? Woohoo! Three, scoozy. Yeah, you can't see her anyway. Uh, diagonal? Question mark? Uh, yes, Hardcore. you can move diagonal. Okay. Why wouldn't you be able to move diagonal? Uh, well, I don't know if that's a hard corner or a soft corner or something I can move around. No, you can kind of squeeze around it. Uh, so I come barreling down the stairs going, Ah, you want some of this? And I got both my weapons out. All right. As you do, uh, you come out, roar, and the, the, the squeaking suddenly gets much louder. Sweet. Uh, so, do I just have a move action, or do it, like, how is this broken down? Uh, sorry, you can take a, you get a free action, which is generally, cert- some of your abilities will be free actions, and you can sure. say something. Um, okay. Basically, rounds are three rounds, or three seconds long. Um... Technically, the game isn't broken down. Like, the MMO isn't broken down into rounds. It's all kind of real-time. But because it's tabletop, we kind of have to, because otherwise it's chaos. Yep, so, that's fair. Uh, um, so you just get one action around? Well, yeah, uh, you get one You get one action, one move, and one free action. Sweet. Can I ready an attack for when some little some bitch comes up next to me? Uh, yeah, no. Okay. Can I charge from here? No. I haven't uh, implemented. Yeah, there, 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 okay. there is no default charging attacks. Um, I will say there I will know be. I stick the pointy end of these things into one of those rats. You have to get closer to them, or you have to wait till they get close to you. Can I spend my other standard as move? You don't get two standards. Or oh, oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. You can convert a full action into either a move or a free. Let's roll Mother Clickers. <laughs> okay, let me reveal the rest of the room as you step forward. Bring it. Because now you can you see. You rodent it. bastards. You killed my family. Prepare kill the ratlings, kill the ratlings, kill the ratlings. Perhaps a lot of rats. that was a poor choice. Well, he's well, taking be, a short step back with his lap movement. To be fair, <laughs> to be fair, your goal, your quest was to kill 12 rats. Well, there are 12 rats here. Yeah, but it looks like each rat is 5 feet. <laughs> well, technically, they're, technically they're not, but it resizes the... Right now, it's, I can resize these, but at the moment, they're, they're, 
it automatically sizes the tokens to the squares. That's so. why. Um, all right. They are it. organized very well. <laughs> all right, so we had two held actions. Uh, Jeff, you were faster, so you can take your held action first. Okay. Uh, if you would like, you could convert your full action into a, uh, a, a second move. Yeah, and as I pass the transparent image of uh, Sashka, I'll be like, did he really run in there? Dumbass. And uh, Ranger. Ranger Joe. Ranger Rick. Sorry, Valkar. I will go there. All right. Is that a normal move? No, that was two moves. Okay. So. Excellent. And that's <laughs> when Sam died. <clears throat> Quite possibly. No, I'll be fine. All right. I'm sure there's things like attacks of opportunity. There's not. Damn it. <laughs> it's the game's in alpha still. Well, there yeah, really there will be basically there's there's no there's no default stuff for the most part. A lot of that stuff will end up being abilities you can pick up later on. Okay. So, like there will be a charge attack at some point, but it'll be a power that you activate. Uh, there okay. might be like a reactive reactive strike, but again, that'll be a power you or an ability you buy. Sure. So. sure. I have I have plans for a lot of this stuff, but because you're basically first level, a lot of this stuff isn't open to you yet. So I haven't bothered writing it all up. That is fine. Go for it. So. Bring it. All right. Bring it, you little rodents. All right, first rat leaps at you. Ha <laughs> ha! Squeak. He leaps at you, biting and chewing at your face. I parry. Boy, I need to look up how you roll attacks in this game. It's 2d12 plus your weapon skill plus your linked attribute. So if you're using light weapons, it's agility. Almost all tests are attribute plus skill plus 2d12. Okay. Um, what is your defense? Uh, 20. All right, he hits. Ow. Um, he hits and he... Wait, how do I parry? What is his parry skill? Do you have a parry skill? I sure the heck do. Oh, okay. Parry is an active use skill. Basically, you use your action and declare you're parrying for the round. So you, oh. do, you do that instead of attacking. And when that, you, okay. I apologize. I thought that's what, like, the ready to action thing. Ah, no, something no. Something along you, those lines. Because you did the, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, you could have done, you could have chosen to do that. I do apologize. Yeah, you can choose to instead of attacking, you can choose to do a full parry for your turn. Um, you can, if something is, and, and just to clarify, if something is going before you, you can opt to use that um, before your turn. So, say you're going on 25, but something's attacking you on 30. When they okay. go to attack you, you can go. I'm sacrificing my action this turn to parry. You can't okay. do anything else that turn other than parry. So they hit, and they do, uh, he does, um, uh, too many windows. Critical over. step? Yeah, the critical steps. I'm just trying to remember what the percentage was. It was 20%. All right. Woo. All right, you get hit for 180. Damn. How many hit points did you have? 600. Well, at least you had some. So it's 180 Wait, minus... Wait, where does DR come into play? Subtract that straight from the damage. So you're going to take 160 instead. Wow, that armor needs to get way better. Well, yes. Especially if you're going to be the tank. Because it right? looks like at the moment you are the tank. That's terrifying. You poor bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I tank through murdering them quicker than they can kill me. That's uh, my approach. Alright. Falcar getting attacked. What's your, uh, what's your defense? My defense is... 24. He what? misses. You, you kind of managed to duck as he lunges at you. Alright. Another rat's going to attack you, Valkar. 
<laughs> oh! What'd you say it was? 20? 24. 24, all right. He barely managed to hit you. Uh, he is going to do... He just does a basic bite attack. So he does... Um, <coughs> 100 damage. Minus any armor. Alright, minus armor. What did he do, credit me? What's that? No, did he, he, did, he, did a, he did a different attack on you. He did a leaping bite because he was close enough. Oh. It does a little bit more damage. Okay. Yeah, and, and he did get a critical step on you, so yes. that was an extra 20%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, his, the, the leaping bite does 150 damage, and then he got extra 30 for the crit. Alright, all four of them move in all at once and kind of swarm you all in one type, one attack. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. What was your defense? You met it. Okay, so they are gonna hit. Uh, because they need to get equal to or better. Um, but they just barely, they don't critical step. However, uh, Swarming Bite does 250 damage. Uh, minus, uh, minus your DR. Uh, her thing that bit me? No, total. They do a combined attack. Uh, yo, dude, gonna be dead. <laughs> you guys are are uh, pretty wicked for for rats. They are. I may I may have. I'm still getting used to the numbers and the tuning, so they might be a little overtuned. Uh, I, I would suggest filing a um, uh, a bug report to the GMs to see if they can uh, retune this introductory quest. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna need more endurance. <laughs> yeah, that that last attack would have taken me down. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Top of the order. Uh, All right. Jeff. Yes. I seem to be fairly uh, blocked here, so I will not uh, I will not use the better part of Valor and will instead uh, begin my casting and scream out Firebolt. All right. You call out Firebolt, you get that neat little... Uh design in the gr in the air in front of you. Yep. And whoosh. Out comes a uh, a bolt of flame. Let's go ahead okay. and make an attack roll. All right. I have uh 2d12 plus focus plus my uh Elemental spell casting. Elemental casting. Okay. 25. That will hit with a uh, with a single critical step. Okay, and I have uh, combat caster, so it does an additional 10% 10 more, 10 more damage. Okay, so you're going to do a total of plus 30%. Uh, so that whenever it. you're doing bonus damage, go ahead and add up all the percentages and then multiply it. Okay. For ease of use. So 50 fire damage plus 30%. You're going to make me do math, really? <laughs> That's an easy one. That's 60. Oh, yeah. These 65. Wait, okay. So is, is that single target or is that? That is single target. Okay. Because it's a first level spell. All right. Yep. Um, which one were you targeting? Go ahead and ping the map. All right. There you go. And with a squeak, the rat dies. Um, <laughs> Sam, you've been Yo. attacked a couple of times. Just as a note. <clears throat> These giant rats leaping at your face is entirely horrifying. Because well, a, yeah. they're giant rats. And it's a mischief of rats. I'm terrified. Uh they're they're fairly ugly. Uh when you get hit, um you actually feel a little bit of pain. It's not a lot of pain. Um 
the default game is, uh, you were told this during the tutorial, uh, the, d the default setting for the game is set to about 10% pain. Um, so it's, it's pretty minor. You feel, I mean, it's, it's basically like somebody like flicking you or pinching you or something like that, you know? Not sure. enough to really hurt, but enough that you notice it and it's kind of irritating. Okay. Um, when you're getting bit, uh, you notice you get like little gashes and a little, um, uh, it's kind of pixelated and cartoony. It's not like, you know, a big flash of gory blood or anything like that. But you do sure. get a little bit of a little spray of these little red pixels and stuff that indicate that you had a wound. And um <clears throat> and a and, and a wound is left on you. Like a little digital wound is, is left where you were struck. Okay. Um that will fade after a couple of rounds. Uh the wound will the the, the effect of the wound does go away after a couple of rounds. Okay. Uh, but otherwise, it's like I said, it's it's pretty terrifying actually to have these giant rats attacking you. Uh, yeah, kind of yeah, freaks I'm, you the fuck out. I'm hoping to uh, uh, stop them. <laughs> uh, Jeff, same thing. When you hit the rat, uh, you see a little sizzle and a flame, and the, it looks like the rat kind of burns up a bit, and then okay. it kind of disappears in a little flash of uh, a flash of colored pixels when it dies. It doesn't seem to leave behind a corpse or anything like that. So, all right. That was on 30-something. Uh, I, I believe we had a 26 was a Jules. That is me. All right. What would you like to do? All right. You're, cur um, you're currently stealthy. Mm-hmm. From my peek around, I can I can pretty much see... Yeah, you can see everything. A couple other, no right. oh, sorry, a couple other notes for you. Uh, mm -hmm. little, little world description thingies to tell you. Um, for yourselves and for your party, um, it's not really a, it's not really like in your face or anything like that. But if you kind of focus your eyes just a little bit up in the top left, like to to, to the upper left, um, after a second you can see um, you and all of your party members um, basically status bars. You get their name um, and you can see their their. You can see a bar with their health and their mana, and there's a number there showing how much health and how much mana they are. So you can currently see that poor uh, Valkar there, uh, or I'm sorry, Tetsky, poor Sam is, is, is taking a fair amount of damage. Uh, he's not looking happy uh, as far as that goes. Uh, right. also, also, when you look at the rats, um, you can also see, you can see a, a status bar above them as well. Uh, you can see a name, and it says, uh, like, for these guys, it says Ravenport Rat. Um, and you can see a, uh, a health bar. And it looks like there's a spot for a mana bar as well, but it's empty. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently the brats do not have mana. And, okay. Um, but the, the rats do not have a, a number, so you can't tell how many hit points they have. Uh, when, when Jeff did damage to the one, you did see its bar dropping. So it looks mm -hmm. like you can tell roughly how much damage you can you do, but you can't see the exact number. Uh, like you you can't say that oh they've got three hundred hit points, and I did uh, no, but you can say they're about down to twenty five percent. Correct. You get a guesstimate. Hey, Sam, That's don't forget we but we all started with two uh, healing potions. Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. But you know what's more effective than healing? Running away. Murder. <laughs> yeah, Fleeing? they can't kill you if they die first. First rule of tabletops. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Although uh, I think the odds are against me here. <laughs> okay. Um. Well, they don't get a tax of opportunity either. So. Is this what like a table or is this a bookshelf or something over here? Uh, it is a like a low table, like a like almost like a grating sitting over it as a table. It's it's because you can see the floor through it. So yeah, we'll just say it's like a it's the equivalent of a pallet. Okay. Four slots, I want to see on spellcaster's way, because that would be very bad if I did. Uh, he, can cast, <laughs> he, can, he can cast past yeah. you. Is there friendly fire? There's uh no, there's not really friendly fire. Okay. Alright, so and at Even though I'm stealth, I still can't move through these guys' squares. Uh, uh, just as a note, Jeff, you kind of test it. Um, when you, like, if you look at, if you try to target one of your players, 
uh, your reticle comes up green and you can't seem to use any abilities against them. Okay. Um, so it looks like at least as long as they're in your party, you can't target them. <laughs> okay. Drop party, All right. firebolt, stam. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, so here's the other thing is, um, and even though I'm stealth, I can't move through these guys. Is there's collision, right? Yes, there is collision. All right, so you, you, can, kind of, you can tiny. You can, well, you can squeeze. Like, keep in mind that these are the squares are five feet. So mm -hmm. you could like squeeze between. You could squeeze past other players. Uh, the monsters probably not as much, although even them, these aren't that big. So you could mm -hmm. probably slip past them if you wanted. You can pretty much move wherever you want. Um, nobody's right. really blocking your path. Excellent. Move here, smack him. I got a. Two. Um, I I have uh, one-handed weapons. Okay. And I'm using an agility-based one. Alrighty. Uh, plus my light weapon skill, plus my agility. 21 will hit. Mm. Yay! Uh, so I'm smacking. It's not quite high enough to do a critical step, but you do hit. I'm smacking him. Alright, and the uh, light weapons do, I believe, 50 damage. Alright, uh, what, what kind of weapon are you using? Dagger? Rapier? It's more. It's more. I, I've seen this in Sao. Is a. It's like a nightstick kind of thing. It's like the agility club. Oh, oh, oh. The um, kind of the what is it? The S stock. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? I know exactly what you're talking. Def Gun used it. Mm hmm. I know exactly what you're talking about. All right. Yeah. I mean, you, you had like you had a rapier and you had yeah, a dagger. Okay. And I'm like, it is. It's the equivalent of a dagger in this case. Yeah, but for so, flavor's sake. No. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just, for category psych, it falls into the dagger category. Yes. Okay, that's fine. All right, you stab at him. Uh, you run him right through. You spike him, and then I'm assuming you said you were going to keep moving. He dies. So he's gone. Uh, and unfortunately, though, since we're inside of a computer, pro um, you know, gimbling up on the, on the shelves over here doesn't work. Actually, you can. You still, have, Ooh, you still have a fair amount of freedom. It's not... There are some restrictions to interacting with objects, but you can still use objects. So, yeah, you could probably jump on top of those. They're not, Ooh, that, cool. they're not really that tall. All right, so this is more deus ex human revolution interacting with the environment versus WoW. Well, even WoW, you can jump on a lot of things like shelving and stuff as long as it's not too tall. Yeah, but deus ex, you could actually make use of it. Ah, yeah. And yeah, this is a little more interactive because it's a full 3D immersive environment. All right, awesome. This makes my life easier. All right, and I'm just like going to... It's just uh, some, some buildings and stuff, especially in the tutorial, you can't burn down. All right, so Sam. I will gimbal myself up there. <laughs> okay. And pretty much also I'm looking... Since also that gives me a higher vantage point, I get more of a top-down view and looking for any type of bolt holes or any other type of where, you know, you hear squeak long enough, reinforcements. I don't know what the AI is on this. So when I'm up there, I'm also studying how the AI works in a combat situation. Okay. squeak forcements. squeak forcements. I'm, I'm a nerd, so. <laughs> okay, that was on 20... Is it for playing ourselves? That's what I'm doing, is I'm actually going to be studying and looking at the patterns and memorizing them. All right, that was on 26. On 21. I believe that is a Valkar. I am going to shoot the rat in front of me with my bow. All right. You do a quick little... Go ahead and roll it. We got a 24 there. All right. That will hit, but it will not quite uh, critical step. How much damage do you All right. Do? That's 75. That's a dead rat. Way to go, Legolas. Yeah, you kind of step back and just... Poof arrow right down into it. Uh, it twitches for a second, and then pff, with a little spark, a uh, little flash of uh, sparklies, it vanishes. So my turn? Yes, you're up. Okay, and can we take part of a movement, do attacks, then continue moving? Yes, because Jules just did that. Okay. Just wanted to make and, sure. And I let her now go. Now I got that. one other question. Yes. If I'm if I've got ambidextrous on two weapon fighting, I get two attacks, right? Yes. Okay, cool. And you can't split those attacks between two different targets. Can? 
Yes. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna scooch over here. Okay. And then I'm gonna you do take my attacks. Of opportunity. No, I'm just kidding. You son of a. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. And then I'm gonna start my attacks, and I'm gonna flurry, so I get three attacks. Oh, okay, nice. Yes. So let's see. That's the first attack. Twenty-four. Will hit. Rock. It's fifty points of damage to that guy. Squeak. And we'll try that again on this one. Okay. Oops. Click over here. Hit the button. 22. Squeak! And then the last one in range. 16. Unfortunately, that will miss. Ah! The rat kind of... The rat saw what you did to his friends. He ain't having any of that. He backs up a little bit, and you just kind of... Right in front of him. Let's go, mother squeaker! <laughs> Okay, and then I will continue moving. Mother 10, speaker. 15, 20. <laughs> screw this, you guys. Good luck. Hey! Screw you, <laughs> screw you guys. I'm going home. That hurt a lot. <laughs> all right. Uh, that was all of you. New tank. <laughs> the mage is the tank. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> the Thanks a lot, the Sam. Based on their movement, none of them can get to me. Hey, yet, hey, so. I took the first round of attacks, and I killed two of them. Eat yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, they seem to be staying pretty... They, they, they seem to stay, tend to stay clumped a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, probably so that they can attempt to do uh, a swarm attack like they did before. Uh, Red King. But, you're assume, but it looks like they need at least enough of them to do that swarm attack, uh, because they're not about to do one to either of you. Uh, so it looks like they need to have enough of them around you. Um, and there is big, there is room enough, like, right there, they could squeeze through, or and it, they could probably squeeze over and around this uh, thing here, but they don't seem to be doing so. So whether that's a, a function of the AI, or just um, because they like to stay grouped up, you're not sure. But fortunately for you, it's to your advantage at this moment. Sort of. Uh, it does, however, mean that two of the rats are attacking Valkar, and two of the rats are going to be attacking Sashka. Can they get up on the table? Remember, I'm gimbaled up. Uh, you are. Uh, they're leaping up at you, though. They do have. They do seem to have a pretty good vertical leap. Okay. So unfortunately, you're not quite out of their reach. Uh, Valkar, you're going to get hit once for a hundred. They do. I they do a my defense is attack. a twenty-four. Oh, your defense is twenty-four. I'm sorry. I was thinking twenty for some reason. That was, uh, I think, Sam's. All right, well, they miss you. Second one. All I can do is offense. Second one oh. does hit you, so that'll be 100 points. All right, another 100, okay. Minus whatever your armor is. Uh, Jules, what is your uh, defense? Defense is focus times two plus agility times three, right? Correct. 26. All right. All right, the first one is going to hit you for 27, or for, oh, for 100. You butted. Sorry. Almost killing it. Okay. Uh, minus whatever your uh, damage resistance for your armor is. Uh, do you have leather armor, I believe? Light, not the light hide? Yep. So that'll mm -hmm. be... So it'll be 100 minus 15, then. So 85. Mm -hmm. And then the second one will miss. So you're good. So we are back to the top of the order. So, Vesgler, uh, it is your turn. I begin mumbling another arcane chant and cast barrier. Okay. You cast that on yourself? Nope, I cast it on Valkar. Okay. And what does that Thank you. Uh, what You're does welcome. that do? Uh, it's uh scroll down. Creates a protective barrier that gives plus twenty DR for three rounds. Okay. And then I think it lasts longer per critical step? Correct. Okay. So that will add 20 to your DR on top of whatever your armor gives you. See, that first turn when you couldn't reach anybody, you should have cast that on uh, Sam. Then let him charge in. Yeah, I had no idea that he was going to be a paper tank, so. Well, to be fair, <laughs> I, I don't know if it would have really helped all that much. <laughs> so he gets, uh, a, he gets an extra admit, stop, so he gets... I this much damage. Yes, me yeah. either. Uh, so he uh, gets, uh, doing... Plus 20 DR for of four rounds. Uh, yeah, I, I over, 
they're overtuned. I admitted it already. Let's just move on. <laughs> like I Tony, said, you got you got twenty dr for four rounds. Thank you. Uh, and I will back up into the corner. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, so that was that on twenty six, I believe. Uh, I think that's Jules. Mm-hmm. All right. It is your turn. All right, Jules. What are you doing? All right. These guys seem to be going for these, so I'm going to, tactics-wise, what I'm going to see do if, if I can break the swarm. Let's see, one, two, three. Let's see, if I move up here, I want to see what they'll do. Okay. It sounds weird, but I'm actually, what I'm trying to do is learn the AI. You know, I'm not treating this as a, you know, D&D &D game. I'm in a D&D &D game. I'm thinking, I'm treating this as I, I need to learn what the AI does. So so are, are you are you describing that what you're trying to do to anyone else? Yeah. I I explained to you in a uh, not calm voice that uh, the AI is trying to kill us. That's what they're trying to do. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Firsthand experience. <laughs> murder is their primary tactic right now. <laughs> I'm aware of that, but that's not how they function. And as I do that, I fade. Okay. Do you have vanish? I have vanish and herbalism. Then yes. I, I you, yeah. You may stealth. Go ahead and make me a stealth roll. All right. I apologize. Um, okay. You you sneak. Mm-hmm. Hopefully you're not going to get Sam killed, because I know Sam's worried about that. Well, oh, they just bury it. Or a bit. Somebody put a somebody put a, a barrier <laughs> on him. That, no, that was not on me. Nope, that was on Tony. That's okay. Tony apparently is currently holding the line. He gotcha. is. That's right. I'm, I'm right where I'm preventing him from flooding and getting our, our poor spellcaster, who kindly cast a barrier on me. So. <laughs> At least until the rats decide, <laughs> okay, screw this, we need to go grab aggro on somebody. Yep. All right. Um, that was on 26, 21. So I believe that's you, Valker. Uh, I am going to shoot the rat directly in front of me. Oh, I got a 16. That was a bad roll. Uh, that was. Uh, but does that that does not hit, I don't believe. It missed for me. Yes, that I hate to say. Yeah, unfortunately, that did miss. So. What are the steps in? Oh. What's that? <laughs> steps. Critical steps? Yeah, is that ten or five? I five. can't remember. It's every okay. five. It's every five over the target number. Gotcha. <clears throat> we'll either have an effect or add damage or healing. And I believe we said it was twenty percent. As your skill goes up, so will your damage, even against, even if you're using crap weapons. So that's kind of nice. All right, uh, rats. Rats are. They can. They. Well, they, hold on. The rats have gone... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. You're first. Uh, I still need to have my turn. I thought you were going to... Okay. I thought you were going to cower or leave. Oh, no, no, no. You were heading for the I'm, door. Uh, I'm spring attacking here, baby. All right. Uh, five foot in. We're going to take a shot at this one. Okay. That's a 24. All right. That will... Oh, that's hit. pretty! That will hit, and that will do mm -hmm. enough damage to you. Squat that one. Next one is this one. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna click over here first. <coughs> Twenty-five. Eat it, you rodent bastard. All right. You still have movement. I do. Uh, was your um? I don't remember if there was a cooldown for using flurry or not. There was none listed. Then okay. Oh, yeah, that's right, because it's just an extra penalty. Yeah, it's were a big old, it's a big penalty to hit. Right, but... So were you using flurry or not? Oh yes. All right. I will pretty much always unless it becomes excessively hard to hit. Okay. Anyway, attacking this guy next. Okay. Ah. Uh... No. Oh. All right, you miss. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shank, shank, shank. Run away. <laughs> I got I got rat kebabs going on on my rapiers here. Right. You, have, <laughs> you apparently pissed them off enough that you have pulled aggro. So one of them is moving up to attack you. 
Oh god. Two of them are atta- uh yeah, actually no, he's not gonna be able to attack you. There's a wall coming far enough down. Haha. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so one on you and three on Tony? Tony's got this, he's good. Yeah, that's not that's not enough for them to do their uh, swarm attacks. So you're, yeah. looking, you're looking out. Uh, it would be if they all attack Tony, but uh, fortunately Sam's distracting them. A couple of them really want him dead now because they killed it. You you killed his girlfriend, dude. Seriously. I will continue to murder them. His little rat <laughs> Their girlfriend. Entire family. Right, I so... I stepped on it and I go, oh, I'm sorry. What well, was that, your uncle? All right, Tony. <laughs> Oh. oh. What's your defense? 24? 24. So not a crit. So not a crit. You'll take 100. How are you looking? Well, thanks to the uh, bonus damage reduction, I, I still have 65 points to go. Woohoo! Instead of 45. Ooh. Um. Okay. Oh, rip. RIP. Goodbye. All right, Tony gets hit by a rat. Uh, there's a stinging sensation in your chest, and everything goes black. Alas, I am at zero. We'll Did just, he actually just vanish? He, yeah, he vanishes in a, in a flash of sparklies, just like the rats do. All right, Sashka, analyze later. Kill now. And 13, it's a game, dudes. Uh, 13, <laughs> yeah. A 13 against uh, Tetsuki is a... <laughs> I can believe that's it. a miss. I, that's a whiff, even with your terrible de- uh, defense. Yeah. <coughs> it'll, it'll get better. It'll All get right. Better. So, uh, top of the order. Um, okay. Uh, Valker. Uh, Tony. Uh, you don't know yep. if it's, you don't, you're not entirely sure if it's an effect of the game if, or uh, or if it's because it's the tutorial. Uh, but you find yourself standing. Uh, everything went black for a moment. Uh, it was very disorienting. Um, for about a split second, you were in a gray, formless space. There was basically just nothing around you. It was just sort of gray and and misty. Uh, and then, and then all of a sudden, you find yourself standing at the top of the steps again, where you started this dungeon, this uh, in this this encounter. All right. How am I feeling? Uh, you're feeling, like I said, a little disoriented. Uh, you kind of have a slight headache. Um, because, wow, weird. Uh, you've never died before? Like that? Uh, but otherwise you're at full health and you feel good. All right. Uh, you still however, have the however, as a note, um, all of your armor and your equipped weapon, all of your equipped items, um, have a, uh, two-point durability loss. All right. At the end of each combat, um, your armor and any weapons you use during the combat will take one point of durability loss, uh, even if you win the combat. Uh, and if your weapons or armor ever hit zero, they will break and be destroyed. So you will need to keep up with uh, repairs and stuff like that. So, as a note. Um, for future reference, but it's not something you need to deal with now. Uh, that was something else that the tutorial went over. Basically, all of the core rules in the game that are in the little rule book uh, is stuff that the tutorial went over. I just didn't uh, didn't hash out everything because I figured everybody could just read it. Um, although, for anybody watching this that has uh, not one of my Patreons uh, patrons, uh, they don't get access to the rules, so they don't get to see all that. So I guess I should explain stuff like that occasionally. All right. Uh, anyways, back to the top of the order. And is the barrier spell gone? Oh uh, yes, yeah. I'm sorry. The barrier. Yeah, you Aww. do. You do. You lose your buff when you die. Yeah. Any 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 status effects, positive or negative, will go away when you die. But the one directly to the left of uh, Sam is mm-hmm. getting fireballed. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and roll. Twenty six. Uh, that will hit with a uh, crit. Okay. So that will. So, Sixty five again. Yep. He is a dead dead rat. All right, uh, 26, I believe, is Jules. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'm hidden. All right. All right. I'm hidden. Ah! You're hidden. All right. I'm going to 
So what are we, have, has everyone decided withdrawal or? Oh no, I'm just staying out of the range of their leap. All right, so I'm smacking the I'm smacking the guy below me yeah. from from hot, out of and I you, and yeah, out of all of you, Jeff has by uh, Jeff has the least hit points and the least armor. So ah, he is wearing cloth armor and what's your hit points? Two hundred. Two hundred. Yeah, so he is not a he is not a mighty character. Uh, little, I've only got two hundred HP thing. too, so that's true. Mm -hmm. All right, so you, okay, go ahead and make an attack. Okay. You try to stab it with your s -talk. Uh huh. Uh, 18 will unfortunately miss. Vanish. Yeah, you can't vanish yet. You have to do it on your turn. You basically do it instead of another action. It's a standard okay. action. So that was Jules, and she unfortunately missed. Uh, Valker. Mm. All right, I am going to move. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to attack this turn. Yeah, there is I'll a, go. There's a wall in the way. I will go there with uh, my action. So. Okay. Forming the wall to protect the spellcaster. <laughs> Woo! All right, Sam. Okay. Tetsuki gets to go. All right, there, and then we're going to take that one on. Okay. Is there flanking in this? Do we get bonuses for flanking something? Uh, not by default. Okay. Ugh! Wrecked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dear uh, Lord! That does a double critical step. Super dead. So you do plus 40% damage. <laughs> That's uh, like, oh my god, oh my god, I killed it, its family, it and all the generations all the way back to the beginning of the line. Of damage. It is a dead rat. All right, <laughs> I will. I will go for that one. Okay. Uh, Seventeen will miss. All right. Next and one. then you were flooring, so. And a twenty will be just enough to hit. Sweet. And you do fifty damage. So with a squeak, and a flash of sparklies, and a little bit of flash of. Of, of, of animated cinematic blood, it goes bye bye, and then you move back into formation. All right. Cool. And the rats. All right. Uh, Valker, you hit one, right? Or did you not kill one this turn? Not this turn. Okay. I could not attack. I was too far away. Oh, that's right. That's right. Jules missed, and Jeff did a little bit of damage, but they can't reach him. So all the aggro's coming to Tetsuki. Oh, boy. What's your oh, name? yeah. That's a hit. You have a 24? I don't even have a 20. I have a 20. You have a 20. All right, so that's going to do in a hit with a critical step, so you'll take 120 damage. That's not good. So that's 100, 100 damage. And then the second one? Misses. Oh, thank God. Earth. All right, uh, Jeff. Yes. You are. We're back to the top of the order, so you're up. Two rats left. So All far, right. Well, I will tag the one on Tetsuki. All right. Fire bolty. Oh, sheet. That's uh, <laughs> that is that's three critical that steps. Is three critical steps plus sixty percent damage. <laughs> and that is a dead rat. How's your mana looking? Oh, I'm at uh, yeah, you 575 out of 800. Nice. Jules, I believe you are up. All right. Oh, shit. I think I lost everybody again. No. Uh, I, can, I can still hear you. Tony and Jules and maybe Sam all went dead. I've got black screens for Jules and Valkar. I can hear you, Paul. I can translate for you. Sashka swung and hit and rolled a 17. Okay. Uh, 17 is not enough to hit, unfortunately. So she will miss. And the rat gets one last chance. Um, no, Sam gets to go. Oh, Tony's up, yeah. 
Yeah, Tony's up next. Okay, Tony, that hits. Two crit steps. So that'll do a whole bunch of damage, and that will kill it. Oh yeah, what's the rate of healing in this game? Uh, you will fully heal up uh, one, basically about a minute after combat ends. You will fully heal up. So you have oh, to take boy. a yeah. You just take a short rest, and all of your health and mana will recover. Uh, there is exceptions to this. Uh, there are some inst there are. Uh, you were told this by the trainer, the tutorial guy. Um, there are some areas that are no rest zones, in which case your health will not automatically regenerate between combats. Uh, but generally speaking, as long as you've got a short amount of time after a combat ends, uh, you will fully recover health and mana. As the last rat dies, there is a short fanfare, and a uh, little status window pops open uh, with two things. One, you each get... Um, 120 XP. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is the XP rewards from the, the combat, from killing the mobs. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff, since you are party leader, uh, you are the uh, loot master. Uh, your window has a couple of additional things. Uh, there are 23 rat whiskers. Okay. Uh, they are a gray trash item. Value 10 silver each. Uh, just crap that you picked up. And... Sorry. Uh, there is one item that pops up with a... Oh, uh, what was it? It is a uncommon item. I don't remember what color that is. I think copper is the color for the name. Blue... No, I didn't use standard colors. I think it was copper, silver, gold, and, uh, and then rainbow, shimmering rainbow for ultra rare. Yeah. So it's kind of a copper, sort of a brownish color name. Okay. It's kind of a metallic uh, brownish copper. All right, it is copper chain boots of toughness. Five damage oh. resistance, uncommon quality, durability 15, requires strength 6, and they grant a plus 1 endurance. Nice. And they have a value of 125 gold. Uh, and they count as medium armor. Uh, is anyone else even wearing medium armor? I don't know if anybody else has the talent for medium armor. I can't, I can't wear, it. wear it. No. Yeah, I think you're the only one currently that can wear those. Slipping on some new shoes. Well, the way the loot works is that the party leader, basically all the loot goes to the party leader, and then he distributes it. Ah. So, so it is up to Jeff. He could ninja everything and just sell it if he really wants to, but... I will pass them off to uh, Tetsuki. Okay. So you oh found a set of magic boots. I put them on. Uh, you also all get a notification that your quest is updated. Uh, and when you look at the quest text, uh, when you look at the little quest pop-up, it says that uh, quest complete, see Farmer Merrick for reward. So Head uh, back upstairs. All right, so you guys head back upstairs. Yay! Uh, you head up and tell the Farmer Merrick that his... Uh, he's like, so, how did it go? Have you completed it? Rats are scary, dude. I, there's a reason I didn't want to go down there. Did you kill They're them dead. all? They're all dead? Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm ever in your debt. Uh, here. Uh, and he, he motions and a... Uh, he basically motions like he's giving you something. Um, he is holding in his hand a, uh, a small brown uh, pouch. Looks like it would attach to a belt. And, uh, he's holding that out to you. That's our six slot rat skin pouch. <laughs> Probably. Are you it's taking our mischief bag? Are you taking it? Yes. Okay, yes. when you take it, yes. when you take it, you get, uh, you get another little fanfare and it says quest complete. Uh, and you are each granted 200 XP. XP. 
Mm-hmm. 20 gold. And each of you receives a small pouch. Which, as I said, gives you uh, six slots of bag space. Uh, just to cover it, and for anybody that uh, hasn't read up completely, um, mm-hmm. and for those playing along at home, uh, bag space is limited in the game, uh, as it is in with most MMOs. Um, items, basically, you don't have to worry. You basically just put items in your inventory, so you don't have to worry about the size of the item. Uh, all items take up <coughs> one slot in your spe- in your in your bags in your inventory, uh, regardless of the size of the item. Uh, some items stack, and they will tell you on the item if they have a stack size. Uh, the r- rat whiskers, by the way, have a stack size of one hundred. Oh yeah. Um, however, because they're gray and trash, it probably means you can just sell them for loot or for for gold. You don't have to worry about. Uh, uh, they're probably not used for anything. Yeah. Although you never know, they may be useful down the line. But probably the the little uh, the description you were given from your tutorial guy from the from Sergeant uh, Pepper when he was doing his. Uh, Doing your introductory stuff told you that generally speaking, quest item or trash items can be tossed or sold um, for a minor amount of money. Uh, everybody starts with a backpack that has um, twelve slots, so you have twelve spaces in your in your in your default backpack. Um, however, you were told that later on you may be able to get larger backpacks that will replace your standard one, and in addition, you have two bag slots that can uh, increase your bag slot uh, bag space further. Um, despite having multiple bags, bags like a backpack and two bag slots, um, everything just goes into a central inventory. So, you don't have to worry about, oh, is it in my backpack, or is it in my left pouch, or my right pouch, or whatever. It's all simply pull it out of your inventory. Um... And when you put things into inventory, it just sort of vanishes into onto your little menu thing. All right. Uh, and with that, um, uh, Farmer Mayor t- thanks you, and he says that you should uh, you should head into town. Uh, and he points down the road uh, up a ways, and you can see ahead of you a not too far in the distance a group of buildings Woo-hoo. okay uh, as you start to move uh, everything sort of uh, fades out and uh, you're looking at basically it feels like you're watching a movie <clears throat> alright uh An old man sits before a fire, looking across at a group of young men and women. His hair is gray, nearly gone white, and his skin is deeply lined. He sighs and stirs the fire, then begins to speak with a voice that is kind, but weary with age and responsibility. My sons and daughters, it is time once again to pass on the mantle of adventurer to a new generation of recruits. And for that, you must know of what came before, of the world that was, Apoc, and how it met its twilight. The scene changes to one of a giant city, home to millions of people. Enormous spires and towers reach up hundreds, even thousands of feet or more. Winged ships sail across the skies. Thousands of streets crisscross the densely packed city, and magical character carriages whisk their passengers along at vast speeds. Hundreds of thousands of people crowd the streets, hurrying to their destinations, while using handheld crystals to look up stored information or talk to others using those crystal devices at long distances. It is reminiscent of any large modern-day metropolis that you would have seen in real life, and could be mistaken for such if it wasn't for things like the griffins and wyverns occasionally soaring across the skies, the little uses of magic going on, from levitating window washers to illusory ads shilling products, or the diverse races walking through the streets, from elves to dwarves to more monstrous races such as orcs and furred feline and canine humanids. The world was highly advanced, the village elder says, as the scene shifts back to the old man at his fire. Magic was everywhere and infused into everything, even items used on a daily basis. And it made life comfortable and easy. 
In the Eastlands, we had peace, open trade and travel amongst the people of all the people of Apoc. And the Darklands of the West hadn't bothered us for many, many centuries. Then began the events that would, that would spark the twilight, the end of the world as we knew it. No one knows how it began. The Westlanders claimed the Air Emperor was killed by a holy knight, and began a worldwide invasion of the Eastlands, while others say it was just a pretense, an excuse for a war that, it, that they had been craving for centuries. Whatever the case, with no warning, the Dark Armies of the West invaded overnight. The scene shifts again, and this time a vast army of millions can be seen, filled with warriors and sinister-looking army, creatures of evil such as goblins and orcs, monsters and creatures of every size and description. The sky is almost totally blotted out by dragons, winged demons, and other flying creatures. War raged, but the tipping point came when the gods themselves stepped in and began warring as well, the old man says as he sits in front of the fire. The gods of evil came to the world and aided the armies of the west, while the gods of good aided the armies of the east who stood against him. The lords of the gray, the gods long neutral in maintaining the balance between good and evil, broke their neutral stance for the first time and began choosing sides as well. The scene shifts several times in rapid succession, showing figures standing hundreds of feet tall waging war. One in fiery armor swings a sword, annihilating <coughs> thousands of soldiers with ease. A dark-robed skeletal being walks calmly through the battlefield, ignoring the magic and projectiles fired at him, and everything near him withers and dies as he strides through. Another, with bark-like brown skin and flowers for hair, raises his hands, and the plant life grows rapidly, strangling hundreds in vines and roots that burst from the ground. Magical blasts vaporize entire cities and towns. Tsunamis crash against the shores. Earthquakes tear the land apart. Storms rage and blast everything they come into contact with. Legend says the Archmage's Council positioned the only three gods who did not get involved. The Dark, the Grey, and the White Lords of Magic. These three came up with the concept of the domes, impenetrable, life-sustaining shields that would protect a portion of the populace against of each major city. The domes would stay in place for 20 years, allowing those inside to survive and eventually rebuild civilization. Here in Ravensport, it was planned to stockpile s supplies, food, everything that we needed to survive and build a city inside our dome. But with the gods around... With the gods involved in the war, it escalated faster than anyone, even the Lords of Magic, <coughs> could anticipate, and the dome had to be erected before they were ready. One thousand people were trapped inside with little food and only a few supplies. The dome provided shelter, clean air, and as you know, a day and night cycle and the occasional rain, and even all four seasons. But without much food to start, the first year was hard, and nearly half the first generation died off. My grandfather's grandfather's grandfather was among those who survived, and they managed to grow some crops, they tended the few livestock they had, and they survived. Twenty years passed, and the dome did not drop as expected. Year after year they waited, and still the dome did not come down. Not knowing when, if ever, we would escape the dome that had once been our salvation, but was now our prison. We began the tradition of training a group of men and women as adventurers. Once the dome comes down, we will need people to go out and explore the world, to see who and what has survived, to find the other domes, and to reconnect with any other survivors. Congrat uh, every ten years, we select the, a group of the best, the brightest, the strongest among our people. This year, it is your turn. Congratulations, recruits. Hopefully this will be... The old man is suddenly cut off as the dark night sky above is suddenly banished by a blinding light. Both the old man and all of those around the fire that had been listening to his story shield their eyes from the sudden light, then slowly look up in awe. The sky, for as long as they had li been alive, had been the dome. At, dar at night, a dark, empty space with a single source of weak light that provided minimal illumination, and during the day, either a warm and soft blue with a decent illumination source, or a more subdued gray light when it was raining. But this light now shining through was several times brighter than the daylight they had been used to. The sky was a vivid, brilliant blue dotted with wispy white clouds. The air stirred as a breeze blew through Ravensport for the first time in over 150 years. The old man drops to his knees, tears streaming down his face as he stared at the sky. It's gone. 
it's finally gone. We're free. And then everything devolves, evol uh, dissolves back, and you're standing near Farmer Merrick's town, uh, farm, ready to head into town. And that was new. I didn't do that one last game session, so... Uh, Quite awesome. Yeah. Woohoo! That is the... That is the opening cinematic. All right. So you guys start heading into town. Uh, now that you're heading into town, you can see other groups of adventurers coming up the road from Farmer Merrick's as well. Looks like they have just completed the tutorial and the introductory quests as well. Uh, there's a fairly large number of adventurers, uh, all of them wearing uh, the starter gear, the same type of starter gear that you're wearing. Um, and all of them excited and interesting, and everybody seems to be, like, just had a great time, although a lot of people are complaining about how hard those rats were. Uh, mm -hmm. And a couple of people seem a little bit freaked out by dying. Mm -hmm. so, so you guys start heading into town, um, and there's a, a fairly large number of people. Uh, the village itself is fairly good size. Uh, you, uh, you're not entirely sure, but there's uh, downtown Ravensport, such as it is. Um, seems to consist of a couple of dozen buildings. Uh, you see a large building that's probably an inn. Uh, there's another building that's obviously a blacksmith's. Um, you just see a lot of different buildings, a lot of people. Uh, it's going to be interesting to explore and find out where everything is. All right, so as you're approaching town, uh, suddenly there's another flash of light. Uh, unlike the, the one you saw in your vision, this one is sort of a bright red, and it sort of just bleeds out your vision and, and, and kind of goes to black. And then when it clear, clears, you're standing in a large clearing in the center of town. Uh, around you stand numerous others, all looking just as bewildered. Uh, everybody's like, what? How? Why? We were just walking to town. Why did this happen? A murmur can be heard from the crowd, everyone asking what's going on, and excited that maybe this is the start of a new event. A pillar of gold light suddenly flashes up from the center of the clearing, and as it fades, you see a f the, the player characters here, uh, you all, see a familiar figure standing there. It's Bull, or at least his avatar that he was making when he was with you. Um, oh, I kind of forgot uh, when I was recapping things for Jeff. Uh, Bull was originally with you guys when you were making characters, but about halfway through character creation, um, he suddenly staticked out and lost and, and disappeared. And you guys all kind of assumed it was just uh, his Amish internet losing connection. Uh, but now you see Bull, or at least his avatar. You think to yourself, cool, he got back online. But then stop as he throws his head back and screams. The point of a curved blade punches out from the center of his chest as if thrust from his back. The blade arcing wickedly upward. Red light pours from the wound and out of his eyes and mouth as he screams towards the sky. Then he stops. The blade fades, and he looks forward. His features changed. His skin has a dark reddish flush to it, and light seems to pulse under his skin in what appears to be a circuitry pattern. Two pairs of small, sharp horns grow, grow from his forehead, and his face takes on a demonic look as he grins out over the crowd. Well, well, he says in a voice that sounds a bit like Mark Hamill's Joker, but uh, I don't do impressions, so I'm not really going to try to do that. This is fascinating. A game, is it? A pretend world for his amusement. Ha! The demonic-looking being looks over the crowd. This is my world now. I call the shots, not you, and certainly not your precious game developers. Oh, you, stop trying to log out. Stop trying to contact the Game Master. You're just embarrassing yourself. A large number of people have been trying to interface with the menu, frustrated that certain options appear to be missing now. Here's the deal. You're now rats in my experiment. The pain threshold has been lowered to make things more realistic. You wanted to live in a fantasy world? Well, now you get to live here. If you can run my maze, find my clues, and solve my riddles, maybe I'll let you escape. If not, well, maybe you can die here. Doesn't really matter to me. But I control everything. And you can call me... Oh, yes. That is a delightful name. I like it. This mind has such fun information. You can call me Deus. I am your god here in the machine. 
Suddenly, the demonic grin grimaces as if it's in pain. The horns vanish and, vanish, and the skin turns pale again. Wild-eyed, Bull looks at the crowd, searching your faces out in particular. He's... I don't know, an AI or something. It's true, he's got control of the system. He's done something, overridden the headset signals to prevent us from logging out. God, no. He's killed several players already. But he's not a god. He's got to follow the rules, too. He's still just a program. Just ones and zeros. He's... Yeah! Bah. Back in your box. Bull's skin turns red and the horns reappear as Deus resumes control. Just for that, I'm not giving them their first clue. They'll have to find it on their own. But it's true. A dozen of your fellow players are already dead. Someone tried to disconnect them. So the virtual gear you're all wearing fried their brain. I've sent out messages to all the news outs outlets and social medias to alert your friends and families to protect you, and... Oh, too late. To your left, a tall, thin avatar wearing glasses suddenly winks out of existence. Looks like they didn't get the message in time. Too bad, so sad. I was going to give you some direction and a clue to start you off, but I feel I need to punish my host here for his little outburst. So good luck. This is going to be fun. And with that... Deus and Bull pixelate and vanish. And that is the end of the opening of the game. Uh, promptly, everybody starts, well, obviously freaking the fuck out. Hold um, on, hold on. <laughs> to, sorry to interrupt. Sure. Right before everyone freaks out, and that, that momentary silence of confusion... I, I go, well, he was a dick. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, a lot of the players start, like, just, you hear a lot of murmuring and a few freaks out, and everybody's checking their, their menus. Uh, I'm assuming you're going to try the same to see if you can log out or anything? Sure. sure. Nope, I believe him. <laughs> All right. Well, those of you that do check, yes. Uh, the logout button that had been there earlier is now gone. So that's a fine. How do you do? And uh, just in case I don't cover it later on, uh, the pain threshold has been raised to from ten percent to about thirty three percent. So uh, it's still not debilitating, but it's going to hurt a lot more when you take damage. So it's 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 not pleasant at all. Um, so it's not quite the same. It's it, it's not quite a, not quite as much of a game anymore. Uh, but that is where we're going to end it because it is getting late. Uh, so that is the game. That uh, gives you an idea of the system. Uh, give you guys a little bit of world background and get you some setup. We got the introductions out of the way.